Okay, everyone, we're here with your principal, Mr. Tyler, and we're going to do a little uh, interview. So, Mr. Tyler, let's talk about dress code. First, let's talk about the ladies. What what do the ladies need to know about dress code? Well, according to our handbook, they need to be uh, foremost covered up. Uh, also, they need to, if they're wearing shorts or skirts, uh, the general rule that we use there is when they're standing up straight, they put their fingers tips down beside and that their skirts or their uh, shorts go below those fingertips and a couple other things uh, if they're wearing leggings or tights they need to have those covered up with a longer shirt or t-shirt uh, any holes in the pants uh, should be down below the fingertips as well so the fingertips is a very good policy for most things as far as uh, covering up what you've got that needs to be covered up okay so the dress code for the ladies who who do the teachers refer for ladies for the dress code? Who handles that? And who will be talking to the girls about it? If there's a dress code issue, Miss uh, Crater will get a notice from one of the teachers or someone, and that will uh, notify her to call that student down to check out the dress code and to talk to you about your dress code appearance. And you may have to call someone to get something to change, or it may be something that can be fixed here at school. Uh, if you have a question about something, bring it to school. Ask Miss Crater and let her know about it, and she can tell you whether it's appropriate or not. Okay, and just to clarify, one thing that we get a lot: leggings are okay as long as the shirt covers the bottom. Correct? Yes, yes, okay. it's fine to wear them as long as you're covered up. Okay, so that sounds great. Okay, let's talk about dress code for the boys. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, the boys pretty much cover everything. It's same same as with the girls when it comes to the fingertips and the holes in the jeans, or uh, if they're wearing shorts. Uh, that are appropriate. We don't wear athletic shorts, but if they're wearing other types of shorts, that's okay. Uh, of course, we don't wear any muscle shirts. That's the tank tops with the boys or the girls. We uh, also need to keep the pants up. Uh, if you don't have a belt, get you a belt. Keep your pants up. We don't allow sagging, uh, which is probably the biggest problem. No hoods or hats. Uh, that's also a problem with boys and girls. We don't want hoods on in the building. Uh, becomes a safety issue as well as a dress code. We need to be able to identify who you are. We see some walking down the hall with a hood on. We don't know if it's an intruder or someone from the outside or one of our students. So no hoods or hats okay. in the building. And it sounds like a good rule of thumb for girls and boys with your pants, your underwear cannot be showing. Okay, so let's talk about cell phones because I've gotten a lot of questions about that and I know that you have too. So cell phone usage in the building. Explain kind of where they can and where they can't. Well, we don't mind you bringing a cell phone to school, and most students do bring a cell phone. The idea is that it doesn't become an uh, interference with education. So when you're in a classroom, each teacher may tell you different things, but the rule of thumb there is you have them put up and turned on silent when you're in a room, and you don't have them out. You're not checking texting. You're not checking Facebook. You're not checking Snap. You are actually have them put up. You have a device that you will get to do your work on, so you shouldn't need a cell phone out for that reason. Yep. Speaking of cell phones, uh -oh. mine ring right on cue. So I should have had that on silent. Sounds good. So let's not let our phones ring in class. Okay, now that you brought it up, you just mentioned Snapchat and social media. So there's a lot that we could say about this, and I plan on putting more videos out, Mr. Tyler. But just rule of thumb, do not take pictures or video of anyone in school. Um, don't put anything on school um, during school hours of school business. And because discipline... Um, there's different discipline actions that could result in that and we definitely don't want to call your parents and tell them you've been filming or doing videos here at school now I'm gonna like I said I'll put out a different video on that but the next topic that I wanted to ask you about obviously we're in no tolerance uh, school when it comes to bullying can you outline some of the things that's not accepted with bullying pretty much anything that makes someone feel uncomfortable we're, we're about not making people feel uncomfortable. We want them to feel uh, like they're a part of our family. We don't want to make fun of them. We don't want to do anything, whether it's joking or not. We don't want to do anything that makes them feel uncomfortable. And I know many of it may start as a joke sometimes, but if it carries on to a point, it becomes bullying and that's a serious issue. There is a law against that in the state of Arkansas. Uh, we will document that in a book and we'll call parents when we need to and explain to them what's going on. So the best thing to do is if like mama says if you can't say something nice don't say anything at all uh, also be sure that you're not taking pictures of yourself in any way or form and sending them out there to someone else that can become a whole nother situation it can really be a problem 
and then people comment on it or they put it on an exposed page or some issue where it's out there forever and you can't have any control once it leaves your phone and goes to someone else's. And we do have a great partnership with the West Memphis PD and other agencies for taking down the exposed pages. But basically, if you or anyone you know is getting harassed, bothered, or you just need to let someone know, there you can tell any adult here. You can tell the counselor, the principal, but please let someone know, and it's going to all anonymous. Okay, so that's another video for another day. Let's talk about tardies and excessive tardies and kind of where that's going to go. Well, we, we have a staggered schedule, which... You probably experienced it a little bit today if you're new. Uh, we let seventh graders out, we give you a couple of minutes to get to class, then we let eighth graders and give you a couple of minutes, and then ninth graders and give you a couple of minutes. You're gonna to talk to your teachers and they're going to work on this. You need to be able to get to class on time and anywhere you leave in the building and you've got a couple of minutes, you can walk anywhere in the building in two minutes and get to that class. Uh, the teachers will talk to you about how that works. They'll talk to you about using the restroom, when you can, when you can't go to the restroom, so that when we're exchanging classes, we want people to in the hall, to the right side of the hall, moving quickly and getting on to class so that we're out of the, out of the hallways and in the classrooms in a timely manner. If this becomes an issue, our teachers have a procedure to follow. Uh, they may give you a warning, they may talk to you, then a second time, it's an office issue where we may talk to you and call a parent. Uh, could get to where we have the parents come in if it begins to be a, a big problem. But hopefully, you're all adults enough to take care of this and get to class on time. Shouldn't be an issue if you'll leave class A and go to class B and just walk straight there and not have any issues. And so, Mr. Tyler, you touched a little bit on behavior, which was my last point to ask you, but it sounds like you've answered all those questions. But essentially, students, you should know that we document anything and everything. So anything in excess, whether it's tardies or behavioral issues, will lead to some form of discipline. So let's everybody have a safe year, a good year. Let's behave ourselves. And most importantly, let's keep our grades up. Some of us need to 100% concentrate on those grades because, you know, last year it wasn't a full year. So let's do the best we can. If you have any questions, you can email. I'm going to put our emails up at the end of this video. So please let us know if you have any questions. Hey, Miss Crater, one more thing before we finish. Uh-huh. Uh, I just want to encourage the students on their grades to get off to a good start. It's much easier to get off to a good start than it is to start bad. Also on the behavior, hey, you've been waiting a long time, some of you, to get to junior high. You're here, we expect to treat you like young adults, not like little kids, but in doing so, we expect you to act like young adults and to act accordingly and mature for your age and, and stop all that and touching and hitting and all that stuff that you did in grade school and become a junior high student. Thank you.